Step 4. Carving the Cemento Enamel Junction By the use of a sharp instrument, we carve the shape of the cemento enamel junction labially, proximally, and palatally. Then by the use of the wax knife or the lecron carver we carve or deepen the cemento enamel junction. The instrument is held at 45 degrees with the block of soap and then we carve to deepen the cement enamel junction. The root under the cement enamel junction is rounded and is reduced in width to clarify the width of the crown and the cement enamel junction. As the crown above the cement enamel junction is wider than the root. Carefully, we use the same instrument to refine the shape of the cement enamel junction as shown here. Step 5. Carving the lingual surface or palatal surface. The palatal surface of the central incisor is a concavity that is bound proximally by the mesial and distal ridge incisally by the incisal ridge and cervically by the cingulum. By the use of the spoon shape of the wax knife we carve the concavity at this area taking care not to take from the mesial and distal ridges and from the cingulum.
now we deepen the grooves and make the ridges and cingulum more pronounced by the use of the sharp end of the wax knife or lecron carver as shown here. Then by the spoon shape or spoon end of the wax knife this groove is made more broad or wider so it will look like a concavity not a groove the incisal ridge as you can see here is made more apparent by including the concavity towards the incisal ridge. Special care should be taken not to take from the incisal ridge or the mesial and distal ridges nor the cingulum. Step 6 Carving the labial lobes The labial surface of a central incisor has three lobes, mesial, middle, and distal lobe. So we carve two depressions that will divide the tooth or the labial surface of the tooth into three areas, as you can see here then we make this groove or broaden the groove or widen the groove by the spoon shape or spoon end of the wax knife to, to make this more of a concavity or a depression rather than a groove Now you could see that the labial surface has three lobes and two depressions dividing the labial surface into three lobes. This is the tooth after finishing the carving. Step 7, the final step, is smoothening 
and polishing. After finishing the carving, the soap or the tooth will have some minimal scratches due to the carving. So we could bring a sponge and brush the sponge onto the tooth. Very minimal pressure is applied in order not to fracture the soap or the crown. Now you could see that the tooth carved is very smooth and shiny.